Okay. Um, uh, well, let's begin um, our liturgy today. And our liturgy begins with uh, the lighting of a candle. So we invite you to light a candle uh, if you have one and if you wish to do so. Um, to help mark out this time and space we share as a sacred time and space. I also, um, perhaps as a gesture towards uh, Christian unity and different traditions, I also have some incense on the go. I got myself a, a little lockdown present, actually, uh, for this lockdown, uh, an incense burner um, with some uh, incense. So I will charge that up. So let us pray. Lord, you invite us to abide in you, who are the vine dresser, the vine dresser who cares for all of us with love. You call on us to see the beauty of each branch united to the vine, the beauty of each and every person. And yet, too often, the differences in others make us afraid. We withdraw into ourselves. Our trust in you and one another is lost. Come and direct our hearts towards you once again. That as one family, we may praise your name together. Amen. And so um, we have our litany of praise and uh, there is a responsory element to this. Um, and the response, and we begin with the response, is you who call us to be praise in the midst of the earth, glory to you. You who call us to be praise in the midst of the earth, glory to you. We sing your praise in the midst of the world and among all peoples. We sing your praise in the midst of creation and among all creatures. You who call us to be praise in the midst of the earth, glory to you. We sing your praise among suffering and tears. We sing your praise among promises and achievements. You who call us to be praise in the midst of the earth, glory to you. We sing your praise in places of conflict and misunderstanding. We sing your praise in the places of encounter and reconciliation. You who call us to be praise in the midst of the earth, glory to you. We sing your praise in the midst of rifts and divisions. We sing your praise in the midst of life and death, the birth of a new heaven and a new earth. You who call us to be praise in the midst of the earth, glory to you. And so we come to our readings and good morning, Jackie and all who have joined us since we began. And our first reading today is Psalm 147. Alleluia, how good it is to make music for our God, how joyful to honour him with praise. The Lord builds up Jerusalem and gathers together the outcasts of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up all their wounds. He counts the number of the stars and calls them all by their names. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. His wisdom is beyond all telling. The Lord lifts up the poor, but casts down the wicked to the ground. The Lord, sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make music to our God upon the lyre who covers the heavens with clouds and prepares rain for the earth. 
He makes grass to grow on the mountains and green plants to serve our needs. He gives the beasts their food and the young ravens when they cry. He takes no pleasure in the power of a horse, no delight in human strength. But the Lord delights in those who fear him, who put their trust in his steadfast love. Sing praise to the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion, for he has strengthened the bars of your gates and has blessed your children within you. He has established peace in your borders and satisfies you with the finest wheat. He sends forth his command to the earth. His word runs very swiftly. He gives snow like wool and scatters the hoarfrost like ashes. He casts down his hailstones like morsels of bread. Who can endure his frost? He sends forth his word and melts them. He blows with his wind and the waters flow. He declares his word to Jacob, his statutes and judgments to Israel. He has not dealt so with any other nation. They do not know his laws. Alleluia. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. And so we come to our reading from Mark's Gospel, and today's reading is chapter 12, verses 18 to 27. Some Sadducees, who say there is no resurrection, came to Jesus and asked him a question, saying, Teacher, Moses wrote for us that if a man's brother dies, leaving a wife but no child, the man shall marry the widow and raise up children for his brother. There were seven brothers. The first married, and when he died left no children, and the second married and died, leaving no children, and the third likewise. None of the seven left children. Last of all, the woman herself died. In the resurrection, whose wife will she be? For the seven have married her. Jesus said to them, Is not this the reason you are wrong, that you know neither the scriptures nor the power of God? For when they rise from the dead, <coughs> they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are like angels in heaven. And as for the dead being raised, have you not read in the book of Moses, in the story about the bush, how God said to him, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. He is God not of the dead, but of the living. You are quite wrong. So, following our usual pattern, I will read our passage again. And, um, Please use the comments box to share any thoughts you have about the scripture. If this is a particularly familiar piece of scripture to you, anything that maybe inspires you or, or troubles you or any questions you have about it. Or if this is the first time <coughs> you've heard this passage, please share what strikes you about it. And um, we'll discuss those things in a brief time of reflection. So, Mark chapter 12, <clears throat> verses 18 to 27. Some Sadducees, who say there is no resurrection, came to Jesus and asked him a question, saying, Teacher, Moses wrote for us that if a man's brother dies, leaving a wife but no child, the man shall marry the widow and raise up children for his brother. There were seven brothers, the first married and when he died left no children, and the second married her and died, leaving no children, and the third likewise. None of the seven left children. Last of all, the woman herself died. In the resurrection, whose wife will she be? For the seven have married her. Jesus said to them, Is not this the reason you are wrong, that you know neither the scriptures nor the power of God? For when they rise from the dead, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are like angels in heaven. And as for the dead being raised, have you not read in the book of Moses, in the story about the bush, how God said to him, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. He is God not of the dead, but of the
but of the living. You are quite wrong. <clears throat> okay. So, some comments already. Rosalind says, I don't think there are many times when Jesus recorded the saying to anyone, you are wrong. Uh, yeah, that strikes me about this passage as well. Um, uh, there's a definite position taken here. <coughs> um, Vivian says, the Sadducees presume possession of women. Yeah, um, I think that that's right. Um, there's a kind of a given understanding that this woman has no choice about this. I think you're right. Um, Rosalind says, God, the living, really central to faith. I think that's also true. Ah, oh, good morning, Miranda. Miranda says, another example of dealing with trolls, lack of patience with unlikely hypothetical situations. Now, it's interesting that um, because um, I, I think that's right in a way. I think that clearly there's a lack of. Well, I don't know, actually. I think this is slightly different to yesterday's situation. And the reason I think it is because the Sadducees had a de defined and different theological position to the Pharisees in that they didn't believe in the resurrection and they didn't believe in angels. And I think that that's, there's, a, a pointedness to, um, there's a pointedness to Jesus mentioning they are like angels in heaven as well here. Um, and I think that actually the Sadducees are asking a kind of uh, are, are doing a kind of thought experiment here um, that, you know, they know that Jesus knows their position on the resurrection. And so actually they're not so much challenging Jesus as um, challenging the very idea of the resurrection and saying, well, go on, you think this one out, you who are so clever. Um, and I think it is a kind of trolling, but I think there's a slightly different emphasis to the, the trolling about the coin. Um, and I think there is actually a genuine, interesting theological question that they're asking here. Um, and actually, I, I think you're right, Miranda, this challenges the popular view that family, families are reunited in heaven. I think what this is one of these passages, certainly, that challenges me to understand that, that there is something different that our relationships um, in this world are uh, not, they, I don't think they're kind of, they're not unimportant because, um, because of the kingdom, but perhaps they are, they are not the be all and end all that, we understand them to be but that's i think true of so much so much of that stuff and i think actually it's one of those passages that challenges our idea of family and um, there's a number of passages you know who are my mother and my brother and my sister um uh you know uh the there's the question about divorce as well um it's this idea that these things that we cling on to uh in our lives aren't necessarily the yeah they're not necessarily the be all and end all maybe maybe our idea of family just needs to be expanded and changed i mean church does that i think church is itself an expansion and a development of the idea of family and i agree with you miranda i think this reading speaks into to that idea um it challenges our idea and those things that we 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 hold dear um it doesn't negate them i don't think but it perhaps asks us to expand those ideas. Um, Janet says, Jesus doesn't often tangle with Sadducees. Uh, this is this is true. It's quite notable this moment. And again, I think there's, I, I think, the, you know, it's, it does have the tone of an interesting theological conversation, I think. And the fact that, that, that Jesus is talking about the kingdom, but also actually, as, as Rosalind pointed out, talking about scripture and saying, look, you know, um, time, I think time is an interesting thing here. Time is coming up again and again and again in our readings. And it's, I think Jesus is saying, understand that our idea of life and death is not the defining thing about existence, that God creates time, God is both in and outside of time and that's something obviously completely paradoxical and mind-blowing for, for us but don't let that 
be the limit. Don't let the fact that it's mind blowing be the limit to our understanding of God. Um, God is the God of the living, you know, um, everything is alive to God at once in a way that it can't be to us. And again, I think this idea about divorce and marriage ties into that, our idea of time and how we define ourselves and perhaps asking us to expand uh, that, our conceptual world. Um, yeah, Janet, thinking about relationships in heaven, um, the idea of, again, the expanded idea of family. <laughs> Vivian says, we'll have to wait to find out. Um, in a mirror dimly, that actually there's something about existence now that is not fullness. And that doesn't mean that that what we have now is dis like is destroyed and negated. That, I think that's what I'm, I, I agree with that. Um, but that this is not the fullness yet, that actually there's more, that, that there's expansion and growth here. Um, Miranda says, reminds me of when Paul escapes a mob by getting the Sadducees and the Pharisees to argue about the resurrection. Absolutely right. Absolutely right. Paul's not soft. Um, that he knows that nothing, nothing gets people going like a good theological debate. Um, Brill, okay, well, I, I'm going to move us on now uh, for the sake of time. Um, but thank you so much for those comments. Um, it's a really interesting reading. I was really looking forward to this today and it, and it hasn't disappointed, actually. Um, I thought there'd be some interesting stuff to chat about here. Um, please uh, do continue to um, use the comments box to share further thoughts about the scripture or to uh, please um, use the comments box for any intercessions you have today any people or things or situations you would uh, like us to pray for and we will move into our set intercessions for uh, the week of prayer for Christian unity and these are the intercessions set for Tuesday so let us pray Holy Spirit you create and recreate the church in all places. Come and whisper in our hearts that the prayer which Jesus addressed to his father on the eve of his passion, that they may all be one so that the world may believe. May we embody this prayer. We thank you for our church communities. And we pray today for the Heart Edge Network um, and we thank you for Helen King's lecture, St Bride's lecture yesterday evening. And we pray that our church communities may be places where um, no question is out of bounds and where all subjects can be talked about in a spirit of um, genuine, genuine safety and inquiry and courage. We pray that our church communities uh, may be communities of truth. Thank you. Amen. Lord Jesus, Prince of Peace, light the fire of your love in us so that suspicions and misunderstandings cease in the church. May the walls that separate us fall. We pray for all places where people feel dissension and separation from one another and we pray particularly this week for the inauguration of president-elect Joe Biden in the United States of America and for for the healing of the deep divisions in that country uh, that justice peace and the good of all may be served thank you amen Holy Spirit, Consoler of all, 
Open our hearts to forgiveness and reconciliation and bring us back to you when we lose our way. We pray for our communities. We pray for the rollout of the mass vaccination centres in this country and that they may be successful in, in helping to quell the virus and allowing for a slow return to um, more, more, something more like the freedoms we remember, whilst never leaving behind the experience we've had in the past year. We pray for all those who suffer at this time. We pray for all those who have anxieties about universal credit, and we pray that the government um, may put the good of those with least in this country at the forefront of their agenda. We pray for wisdom and compassion in those decisions. We pray too at this period of bad weather for all of those people around the country affected by the storm and we think particularly of those already hard hit businesses um, and the fishing industry and all those who bear the brunt of the bad weather and we pray that they may be, may be able to get through this period and the period of restriction and come out and thrive the other side. We pray also during this weather for all those who are homeless, sleeping rough and living on the streets, that they may know the comfort of your presence and that they may find shelter and be helped to find shelter. Thank you. Amen. Lord Jesus, gentle and humble of heart, give us poverty of spirit so that we may be open to your grace. Thank you. Amen. We pray for the funeral that will be held at St Dunstan's tomorrow. We pray for all those who have died recently and all those who grieve and who mourn their loss and for all those involved in funeral ministry. Thank you. Amen. Holy Spirit, you never abandon those who are persecuted for their faithfulness to the gospel. And you never abandon any who are persecuted. Give them strength and courage. May they know the support of your presence and those who help them. Thank you. Amen. At the centre of the world is God, in whom all our desires and longings find their meeting place. As we move closer to God, so we draw closer to one another. And the closer we come to one another, the closer we come to God. And so we gather all our prayers, the prayers we make today, and the prayers in our hearts, in the words that Jesus gives us. And um, we'll use, um, I suppose, what we might call the tra more traditional version of the Lord's Prayer that's in our liturgy. Uh, but please use any version of the Lord's Prayer that you enjoy using in any language. So let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. So we come to our closing responses. And um, the response to the bidding is, with God's help, we will. So let us pray. Will you pray and work that God may reign? With God's help, we will. Throughout your day, will you let the word of God 
breathe his life into your work and play and rest. With the help of God, we will. Will you maintain inner silence in all things, so as to dwell in Christ? With God's help, we will. Amen. So we come to our moment of blessing. May we be one, so that the world may believe. May we abide in God's love, go into the world, and bear the fruits of this love. And if you have the liturgy, please join in with our closing affirmation. May the God of all creation fill us with all joy and peace in faith so that we may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, thank you all so much for joining us uh, this morning. It's always a pleasure and a privilege to share in this time of prayer with you. Um, uh, Miranda will uh, be back leading morning prayer tomorrow and on Thursday and then our student chaplain Lily will be leading on Friday. Um, we will have our um, uh, our Taste of God uh, lunchtime congregation today at 12.15. Um, we will be trying out a draft liturgy today, so please, we would really appreciate any input. So if you would wish to join us at 12.15 today for a taste of God, um, it's on Zoom. So if you have the um, parish email, the link is on there. Uh, but otherwise, you can email me, uh, curate at stlukeinthecity.org.uk uh, or a taste of God at stlukeinthecity.org.uk and we can send you the link um so yes we'll be we'll be trying out a draft liturgy and we'd really appreciate some input as we we form our new liturgy uh for the year ahead um and yeah i think that's everything um uh please keep uh laura mikey and family in your prayers as they've moved into their their new house and laura will be back with us um, uh, when she ends our leave, her period of leave on Sunday, I think it is. So we're looking forward to uh, welcoming Laura back, but please keep her and all the family in your prayers as they settle into their new house. And um, wherever you are, and whatever you're doing, please stay safe. Uh, God bless and see you soon. Bye. <laughs>